cup of a plumber. A cup of a carpenter, <laughs> you knob. So, um, <laughs> morning, guys. Sorry. Good morning, guys, and sorry we missed you last week. We both came down with horrendous flu, chest first, followed by me. So we had to take a week off to recover because there was no way we could do anything. Really knocked us out. We decided to take a break from the video because we need to be fighting fit for the next few weeks. If this is your first time joining us, we're about to drive all the way up to Alaska to pick up the Pan American Highway to then drive all the way down to Argentina. So we needed to make sure yep. that we were back on fighting form. But before we do that, we have got a lot of questions that you want to know about us. Just one. Is that it? That's all we got. Only joking guys, <laughs> there's loads in here. So without further ado. Oh, oh my God. Cat thinks they're all treats Sorry, for him. Okay. He's going to be eating all the questions. Here we go. He's going to be the most knowledgeable dog. And a cup of a carpenter. And you'd be like, what? Indiana Jones and the Temple of. I used the... it was the Last Crusade. I was about to say that. Anyone who's watched Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade will know what I'm on about. Is it actually called the Cup of a Carpenter? The Holy Grail, isn't it? The Cup of a Carpenter. But is it called that in the, like? I've never heard of that before. Well, that's because you never watched the film. Anyway. Oh, the first. Okay. first question. First question is. Oh, who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, Jet from Gladiators. Good shout. Mine was Leonardo DiCaprio. I was obsessed. My friend at school Typical. used to bring in like little keychains and posters from magazines and stuff. It was the bangs. It was the, the, curtain. Bang. It was the curtains that did it for me. What's been your scariest experience in the van? For me, without doubt, it was the Balcony Road in France. In fact, we've had so many of you messages still to ask us where that road is so that you can avoid it. It was just terrifying. It was like a 2,000 foot drop on one side with next to no barrier. And what was the worst part was that the overhang on the other side was kind of pushing us out and we were almost too tall for it. And we later found out that we were too long for that road. We shouldn't have gone on that road. We just found ourselves on it and it was terrifying. Yeah, there were no signs to say of height restrictions or length restrictions. No, but until you got to the other end. So the way we came in it, there was nothing at all. But the other end you come in, there was, wasn't there? Yeah, it was so bad. And I actually cried for the first and only time in my life. I cried because of how scared I was. I don't think I've got a scariest moment in the van, if I'm honest. We have been really like lucky, haven't we? Yeah, I, I, I can't. Think We've had like actually. uncomfortable things, like in, in Greece, the guy on the motorbike. Yeah, but nothing, but not, well, for me, nothing scary. Nothing no. scary. No. Cool. Oh, You're hardcore, aren't you? Hardcore, right? yep. Except of moths. Yeah, well, yeah, that's Ben different. will scream like a six-year-old girl if there's a moth around. Well, they go for your neck. That's why they go for your neck. How do the dogs cope with bad weather days? Oh, they're brilliant. They're the best dogs in the world. If it's raining and it's cold outside, we have to force them to go outside. They will hold going toilet as long as possible, like all day. On a nice day, they want to be up and out by eight. Yeah. But if it's raining outside, they you probably won't get them out until like four o'clock in the afternoon. They're amazing. We will take them out before. Oh, yeah, we will, yeah, we will like, they try to take them out, but they they'll hop like out, it. they'll do it, and then just run straight to the yeah. van. They're really easy on bad weather days, which yeah. is nice. Close your eyes. Okay, if you could do life again, but do something completely different, what would you do? I would be a DJ. A DJ. A DJ. <laughs> I'd love, I absolutely love to be like a trance DJ at like festivals. It would be so much fun. Like sometimes like, I'm just wondering like, can you do like a career change now? Yeah. Can I learn how to do it now in the van? I think I'd need a house with all the stuff, but I'd, I'd love to do that. We really want to go to the, the Tomorrowland Festival, don't oh, we? To be a that DJ, is... oh, that would be insane. Just to even go there would be cool. Um, yeah. I think I'd be a vet. Having these two, after having these two, I think I'd love to be a vet. You'd be a really good vet because oh. you, you love animals. Exactly. Problem is, half the time, apparently, vets just clean out dogs' anal glands, don't they? That's, oh, yeah. that's like the unglamorous <laughs> side of it. Oh, no, I've already picked, haven't I? Okay. I just, sorry. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? It would be the, it used to be the ability to persuade, no, the ability of persuasion. That, that is. It's a, bit, a bit, it's a bit dark. dark isn't it? <laughs> but I think now it would be the ability to stand in one place and like rewind time and see what happened. 
in that given that place. That was my superpower. No, it wasn't. As a ghost. So you couldn't like interact with it, I but you could see what happened. I said that to you on a drive once, and I said that would be my superpower, so. and you were like, no. oh, that's a really good one. I and now you've so. hijacked it for your own. Well, there you go. You can have that one as well, then. We can do it together. Oh, what? <laughs> can we have our own things? We live in a van. We work together. We <laughs> oh, do YouTube. Can we not have one thing? We can time travel together Oh, great. As well. Oh. I might leave you there. <laughs> right, oh, me, isn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna throw them up and see if you can catch one like a fly. Okay. <laughs> Just give me the bowl. Best music gig. Uh, ooh, beans are loads. Mine would be Oasis at Finsbury Park, closely followed by Oasis in Plymouth Pavilions. I can't top that, that's really good. Nobody I, can top I that. wish I'd seen Oasis. That would be awesome. Amazing. Probably one of my, my best gigs is a band that nobody will have heard of called Godspeed You Black Emperor, so I'm not going to say that one. But Pixies. What are they called? Godspeed You Black Emperor. They are incredible. Like, if anybody knows who they are, we can be best friends, but they're a bit of a niche band. But uh, Pixies um, were absolutely amazing, weren't they? So good. Followed by Spice Girls. We went to see Spice Girls. Oh, Spice yes, Spice, didn't we? we did that went to Spice Girls in the pouring rain. Um, oh, it's you. Who made the first move? Chess. That was quick. Yeah. It wasn't me. It was you. It was. It was me. you at the bar in Pop, Pop World. Yeah, you. Downstairs. You went in. I went. I was leaning over to get a straw. <laughs> no, you were not. <laughs> uh, maybe it was. It's a bit it, of a mix of both, I would say. Maybe it was just a moment. Yes. Try again. I want to see if you can catch one. Go. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? Okay, top three remote places. Oh, this is one for you. Top three remote places in Europe that are dog friendly. Everywhere in Europe is dog friendly. No, it's, no, it's not. Everywhere was. We didn't have to have them on the lead all the time. Everyone's no, dogs are well I, behaved in Europe. I would say um, the Pindus Mountains in northern Greece are absolutely incredible and such an underrated part of Greece. In fact, they're probably one of our favourite places. That's probably our favourite place in the whole of Europe. So that far. was really good, yeah. yeah. Um, the Dacha Peninsula in Turkey is incredible, and 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 the Southern French Alps. Just yeah. avoid the Balkan roads. Why are you looking? There's a lot. There's quite a few in there, isn't there? Questions, guys. Thank you. What does Ben look like with hair? Oh, insert photo here then. How do you do it? Ben had yeah. Ben had hair when when we met. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I only shaved it about five years, five years ago, when we were in I... Bali on an island on Gilly Air, I yeah. think it was, and we were in the hotel. I was like, oh, "What?" Well, actually, I wanted to go get my hair cut, but there was nowhere. We walked the whole island, and there was no barbers, sort of like hairdressery places. Oh, there's a question down there. I think before. it's the one I flicked. Oh right, okay. And I was like, right, sod it. It's just receding too much. Like it's just awful. And yeah, just shaved it there and then. It really suits you though. Like some people don't suit it, but it really like you pull it. Yeah, it doesn't make my head look like a peanut, does it? No. Having the beard helps, I think. Most expensive thing you've purchased because of YouTube. Camera lenses. Yeah, camera and camera lenses, isn't it? It's like Cam they're just really expensive. Yeah, without a doubt. How are you dealing with Costa Rica not allowing right-hand drives? Easy. So when we get down to Mexico, we go into Mexico, we go into Belize, Guatemala. Guatemala, and then back into Mexico to... Ship from Veracruz down to Cartagena in Colombia. Yeah. Because if you didn't know, Costa Rica and Nicaragua both have a full-on ban on right-hand drive vehicles. You can't even transit them as a tourist. It's a big no-no and there's no other way like those countries block the route south so we'd, we'd have to drive through them to get to Colombia um, so we're gonna ship from Veracruz in Mexico down to Colombia and it also deals with the Darien Gap which is that little bit of jungle between Panama and Colombia where there are no roads it's all like really dodgy like yeah. lawless area so you have to ship around the Darien Gap anyway we're just gonna be shipping a little bit sooner so Right, next. There we go. Black belt and origami. Ben, how do you get such amazing drone shots? Thank you very much for your kind words there, but I don't fly the drone. Chester's. Yes. A lot of people think you do. A lot of people shots. think it's me, but it's not. It's Chester's all the filming, a man's all job. the drone <laughs> stuff. Yeah, so Chester's all the filming, all the drone flying, and I do all the driving. Yeah, that's how we get the drone shots. 
Do you regret driving to Alaska only to backtrack south again? No, because we're not actually backtracking. So going up to Alaska, we're going, well, we're in Utah at the moment. We're heading up through Montana in towards Calgary. Yeah, yeah Calgary. And then to Fairbanks that way. And then when we come back down, we're going um, along the west coast. <laughs> Yeah, West so coast to Vancouver way, and then down the Pacific Highway. Yeah, so we're doing like a loop. We're not going to be going like up and back down again. We're actually getting to see a lot of stuff that we really yeah. want to see. So it's we're really happy with the route we're doing. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah, be amazing. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Can't wait. Okay. No. Yeah, it's you. Oh, is it? <laughs> when are you getting married? Bloody hell. We have no plans to get married. We'd rather spend our money on adventures and experiences and life stuff like this than... They're so expensive, even a cheap wedding. Yeah, you're still it's... talking thousands and thousands yeah. of pounds. So we'd rather do this. We've got no need to get married, unless we have to for, I don't know, paperwork reasons, then we'll just go and elope somewhere. Sorry, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> no, we probably, no, seriously, though, we, we have said that we might get married at some point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And but there's just no pressing need to do it anytime soon. Yeah. Favorite video that you've made? Um, favorite video for me is when the one when we found Scout. The video we did about Scout, who he was, what he was like, what state he was in when we found him, because it's just so nice to see how far he's come along since we found him. That's the nicest video for me, I think. Yeah, when we look back at that video and we just see just how skin and bones he was. Yeah, he was a mess. And, and you see us like as he approaches, like as he comes up to us and finds us and we're like, oh, we found this, this dog won't leave and he's gorgeous and he plays with River and you see, yeah. And then we just in the end decided we had to, well, he adopted us, didn't he? Yeah, really? he did not leave us. I think one of my favorite videos apart from that is the Cappadocia one with yeah. the balloons in the snow was just a magical like otherworldly experience and remember that taxi driver so we got snowed into the car park so yeah. it was the middle of winter and that taxi driver like he had this little hut in the car park didn't he he beckoned us in didn't and he was he? like come in and he like cooked us lunch had this stew and he didn't speak a word of english and we didn't speak turkish but through google translate yes yeah yeah that he, he was, was He's really, really nice, isn't he? Yeah, and he's telling us about his kids in Japan and he's not seen his granddaughter because of the pandemic. And it was just... Yeah, it was, it was like, lovely. It was a mixture of like amazing scenery of Cappadocia and then the Turkish hospitality. Yeah. It's one of my favourite videos. Thank you. Okay, next. Do you... Gosh, a couple of heavy questions. Do you think you'll have <laughs> kids? Um, at the moment, we've got no desire or urge to have kids we no. enjoy how our life is at the moment we have these two little fur babies yeah, we have here two kids. we've got two yeah. furry ones um at the moment no we've got no intention have we no i think the more that life goes on the less we want them <laughs> i <laughs> yeah. think like at some point you feel like you have to and then when we realize that we don't have to we're like oh actually we don't have to do that and i was just saying like i have never had that like motherly maternal maternal like desire to have kids and i thought oh as i get older it will like hit me um and it's not hit me yet so just, who knows we just don't we just don't feel like we want them so mm -hmm. if you could time travel to any era what would it be um it would be the building of the ancient pyramids oh that's a good one i was gonna go for stonehenge Oh, that'd be a good one. And we yeah. could solve two unsolved mysteries together. Oh, yeah. yep. I like that. Anything that has never been explained. Yeah. Any coping strategies um, to not pick up any oh any what, what? coping strategies to not pick up stray dogs. My writing. Yes, it's your writing. <laughs> I can't read your bloody writing. Never can. Um, any coping strategies to not pick up stray dogs. Uh, if we see a stray dog, we move on. <laughs> Easy as that. Um, we drive around like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no. Um, we haven't, have we? But we can't take any more dogs. We haven't got time to rescue dogs. We, it just wouldn't work, would it? No. I mean, look at what we've already like. We've already got a stray dog. So whatever coping strategy we did have clearly <laughs> didn't work. And then we also had the fiasco with Rosie in Serbia. Um, I think. I think like carry around dog food. Um, so, and like giving dogs food and water when you see them 
um, always helps and you do have to just tell yourself that if, if you haven't got the space for one you haven't got the space to take one and that's that you'll meet a lot of stray dogs and you won't want to take every single one home yeah not every stray dog needs a family because they're 99% of the time they're in packs scout wasn't scout was on his own he was with a cat and he, he wasn't with any other dogs. There were packs of dogs around, but Scout was just on his own. And yeah. he was such a people dog mm. rather than a pack dog. Yeah. Which is why we picked him. Yeah. Picked uh, him off the road. <laughs> a lot of stray dogs are like run around in packs. They're happy. They'll come up to you and get fed and then they'll go off and yeah. they're, you know, and I'm not saying it's an ideal life for them, but the reality is you won't want to adopt every single street dog that you find. Um, but. You know, if you do find one and your heart is stolen, you've got to make that decision whether you do something about it, whether there's shelters nearby, depends where you are. You know, you're just going to have to yeah. make that decision. But it's definitely not, it's not black and white. And it's not easy. So, what what is the most spiritual thing you have in the pan? This is one for you because where I have do, where do nothing. Chess has a ridiculous amount of stuff. She has tarot cards, books, uh, the Turkish eye protection eye, like a smudging feather and shell thing. She has like these little wait, wait. ceramic, no, stone wait, doll things. They're not dolls. Hang on a sec. My word. Tarot cards. Oh my God, here you go. Spirit walking book. Smudging kit. Let me quickly just take this out. So you like do stuff with burning things. And then we have when we were in Santa Fe, I went to a shop that sells stone crafts by the Zuni tribe. And this is kind of like the thing that they do. Some tribes do jewelry. These guys carve soapstone animal carvings and they're called animal fetishes and they're basically the spirit of the animal comes through mm -hmm. the carver as they're carving it and they all have different properties um, and apparently when you go into the shopping it's like the fetish chooses you you don't it's like the wand in Harry Potter oh my it's God. like they choose you yeah. you don't choose it and um, for anyone who knows the cool blackbird story I was really drawn to this one which is um, a little white bear which is I found out afterwards for like protection when you're traveling and stuff um, but I didn't realize at the time until I went to like buy it and the guy there said oh have you seen this is from somebody called the Quandalacy family and you can see it's got all this medicine um, gemstones on its back and this top one um, it's like a blackbird so that was pretty strange yeah I've got the little medicine one and I've got the corn little corn maidens We've also got some mugwort from Salem, which is good luck for travellers. Oh yeah, we do, yeah. We've got that little pack from there. I don't know what mugwort is. It's a herb. Oh, it's a herb. There we go. <laughs> so we've got a herb. We've also got basil, coriander. Oh, it's my game. Is it? Yeah. Do you argue and how do you handle it? Yes, and not very well. No, yes, of course we <laughs> argue. We live in a van. We live, live in a van. Uh, we travel in the van, we have our own business, we have a YouTube channel, we do everything together. Um, and if we start, well of course we argue, um, but we kind of, one of us will take ourselves out of the situation, calm down, come back, talk about it, and then move on. It's not something, when you live in such a small space, you can hold on to, otherwise it would just keep going and going and going and get worse and worse and worse. So we've learnt fairly quickly that, we need to sort it out before it escalates. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. That was, yeah, it's true. And I think we're both quite like strong personalities. Yeah. And so we do clash sometimes and we do have different ideas of things. And especially if we're not in the right kind of frame of mind to communicate properly, we can just very quickly go into like a, yeah. you know, and we, yeah, I think being in the van, you just have to, you have to sort, have it, to out sort it out straight away. Yeah. You can't go to work and get away from it. No, yeah, but on it, sometimes it does just take one of us going out for like half an hour Yeah, yeah and exactly. we'll come back and things will have calmed down, yeah. so. Plans after reaching Argentina? Ooh, um, not 100% sure, but when we get to Argentina, we do know that we want to hop on a boat tour to Antarctica. That would be amazing. We so hope we can do that. Um, and then we've talked about driving up and exploring a little bit of Brazil. 
Yeah. But after that, we'll have to, we'll wait, have and to see. wait and see. There's so many different plans and options. Yeah. We haven't nailed one down yet. No. We still got to get to Alaska first. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Still got to get to Alaska in one piece. God, half this video is gonna be unscrap un rolling <laughs> these unfolding these. Yeah. Okay, oh. most spontaneous thing you've ever done. I think for me, quitting my career, selling my flat, selling my car and all my possessions. In the, from, in the space of in the space months. of a few months. In a new relationship that was less than five months old. Yeah, yeah, within six months of a new relationship. Uh was kind of very spontaneous, I think. <laughs> What about you? Probably when I finished university, a couple of weeks after, I went down on a little break to Devon and Cornwall. Some, some of my dad's family lived down there, so I went to go and see them, and I just fell in love, particularly at a little place called Totnes. And within a couple of weeks of coming back, I'd got a full-time job as a waitress there and moved into somebody's room in their house and didn't know anybody there and just basically started a brand new life in a completely new place where I didn't know anybody working as a waitress yeah. in a cocktail bar <laughs> and um, yeah that was pretty spontaneous but it was the best decision I ever made I had a full body yes that I needed to do that and if I hadn't done that I wouldn't have met you yeah I don't know if I know if I'd even be doing this it was the best decision I ever made it was pretty yeah. random okay last few one favorite thing and one annoying thing about the other um, uh, one favourite thing Where do you start? about you, so many favourite things, oh, really? um, your sense of adventure, your okay. sense of adventure, yeah. yeah, and what's annoying is the fact that you take so long to get up in the morning, like so long, like a good hour and a half from alarm to actually pulling your ass out of bed. I don't think it's that long, I think you, hour and a half. Ben is a, like psychopathic, like wakes up, he's like, ready to go it's yeah day. he's like woo 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 morning good morning everyone hi hi do you want a drink blah, blah, blah. and i'm just like oh my god just please slow down well you're like oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh and that it does wind me up but really yeah 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 because like it'd probably be different if yeah. we had a fixed bed and i could go and like start work but i have to wait like for you to get up but we make the bed so i can start working i think that's more of the you could take these guys out for a walk no, not at like half five, six o'clock in the morning. You see what time he gets up, and I'm. There. Yeah, yeah. I think it. Yeah, I think I think we could solve that if we had a like a different. That is true. Like you, you could stay in bed, and I could just get up. I think that would be like. Yeah, and you wouldn't. That, I'd anything. be fine then. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, <clears throat> probably one of my favourite things about you is you're just like so much fun to be around. Oh, like you make everything fun. And you always have done, like even when we were just friends and stuff, that was one of my favourite things about no, you. It was just you. like, um, you bring you bring the party. Yeah, exactly. yeah, there you go, see? Party starter. <laughs> and um most annoying thing is probably biting your nails. Oh, no, you can say that. It's really annoying because you do it all the time and you do it when it's really quiet and all I can hear is tick 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 tick. And it makes me wanna that. Smash a window. Well, you should go for a walk. Take the dogs out. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I would, okay. I would never be in the van. No, well, okay. So, oh, how is the Starlink? If you could go back in time, would you purchase again? The Starlink has been an absolute lifesaver. It's amazing. We've never had any problems with it. Um, we've managed to go off, like away from towns and cities where there's been no mobile signal for like weeks upon end when we're in Baja we need to use it all the time because there's very little signal where we were yeah if I could go back in time I would 100% buy it again and I would 100% buy it sooner yeah yeah we cannot overestimate how much of a life changer Starlink has been mm -hmm. our best park ups that we've had on this entire trip have almost always been like Morrison's Beach in Nova, in Scotia. Nova Scotia, that beach we spent all that time on in Baja. We needed the Starlink for that, we wouldn't have been able to stay yeah. there without it. And in terms of changing our experience of, of the trip, because we've been able mm -hmm. to stay in places like that, yeah. has been game changing. Like, I can't. It means we haven't need to stay near towns and cities. It's yeah. Been really, or really be dictated. Good, yeah. It's almost like we haven't had to be dictated to by phone service. We could be yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And 
and it's it's so fast as well yeah yeah it's brilliant absolutely love it and they're bringing new updates all the time like i think one of the latest updates is going to be a global one where you're not restricted by continent yes exactly on the and rv we'll, package we'll switch yeah because the rv package has changed into like a roam package i think yeah and there's two, two options it'll be global and like almost like geofenced continent based and we'll go for the global one so we can take our starlink everywhere we go it means we don't have to buy a new one when we go to south america which yeah. is what we were going to have to do so 100 percent, 100 percent recommend it i love the starlink oh i've got two in one here what is your go-to karaoke song uh oh, god, oh my god, god. wait I, go on what's your go-to oh karaoke my god song? no i'm not <laughs> i i would say <sighs> oh i know what yours would be what oh it'd either be I think it would be George Ezra, Budapest. Oh yeah, love yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually have like a go-to character song. I just, but I'll sing along to any song really. Mine would probably be King Without a Crown or Without Me by Eminem. You are all that I have and all that I need. Each and every day, afraid to get to know you. Please wanna be close to you. Yes, I'm so hungry. You're like oh water from my soul when it gets thirsty. I'm searching <laughs> up to the sky, looking beneath the ground, like a king without a crown. You keep falling down. I really want to live, but can't get rid of your frown. You well done. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to do that, um, like those karaoke bars. You know where you get go, go into like a booth. Yeah, like I know. a like a sound deadened room, and you can just go. And... Would need to be sound deadened. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Oh damn! Oh my god! Ready? Yeah. Oh damn! Do we do it again? Do you want okay. to try again? Right. Yeah. Okay. There yes. we go. Well done. That was so many takes. Uh, it was only three. Oh well, there you go. Three. <laughs> okay. Last question. Last question is. Any second thoughts about not getting a four by four? Uh, oh yeah, hundred percent. We would have loved to have been able to get a four by four, but they're just so so expensive yeah. that you know we couldn't afford it. I think they're like seventy, eighty thousand. So much money. Yeah, and it's really hard to find a empty cargo van four by four in the UK when you don't really need four by four cargo yeah. vans. Or it was. I don't know what yeah. it's like now. It's probably even harder now. Do you think? Uh, yeah, I think they are like rocking horse shit. I think yeah. like. Yeah. I've never heard that terminology. Have you never heard? I've yeah. heard unicorn shit. Yeah, like rock, rocking horse yeah, shit. Yeah, rocking horse shit. Yeah, you you will be so hard pressed to find them. Yeah, for decent money. So, but who knows? In the future, you never know. We you might know. get a four by four. But we do. Yeah, we, we would have loved one from the yeah. beginning. Well, that's it, guys. That is all your questions. I hope that sheds some light on us, travel background about us. What's who, happening? Who we are? What we're doing? The dogs? Yeah. So. But yeah, thank you, you for go. watching, guys. And next week is the official start of the drive up to Alaska. I am, so, I'm almost like overwhelmed by everything that we're going to be doing and everything that is to see. It's going to be epic. It's going to be so good. So, I hope you're excited to come along with us, and we shall catch you next week. See you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, good boy. Come here. Come on. Come on. Ah. Oh my god, look at this girl! Oh, he's put his bum on your face! Oh, I got teabagged by Scout. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have if he had balls, but. Yeah, good job he's got the snip. Yeah. <laughs>